Street Fighter 6 has been out for a year, and every now and then I still see questions about modern controls. I looked into them a bit when the game came out, and honestly I think it's not an extremely impactful decision. For example, I originally planned to make a modern version of my B&B combo video, until I realized it would be about 90% the same. So let's take a look at what's actually going on with modern, as well as some of the appeals of using it, both as a beginner and a veteran. I'll mostly be using good old Ryu as my example, but I'll divert to other characters when it's relevant. The most immediate trait of Modern Controls is that it doesn't use the 6-button punch and kick system Street Fighter titles have used until now. Instead, we have three different strength normal buttons, as well as the special move button. Holding different directions while pressing the special move button will give you different special moves. There's only neutral plus left, right, and down, so you can only get four different specials this way. You might think Modern would use fewer buttons than the classic control scheme, but it actually seems to use more at 7. While you can still do grabs with a button combination, the only way to input either Drive Parry or Drive Impact seems to be their dedicated buttons. Bringing our total up to 6 so far. But there's actually a new button that doesn't exist for classic, probably the most complex and interesting part of Modern from an input perspective, which the game seems to call Auto. While the button does nothing on its own, holding it will change the properties of your other moves. For example, special moves inputted with auto alongside the special move button will become EX moves. While hitting any normal repeatedly results in a little auto combo. The auto combos will automatically consume resources, which is a little annoying I think. It's important to note that you can both combo into and out of the auto combo strings, so you're not exactly railroaded like you are with the auto combos of many other titles. Having fewer buttons dedicated to normals significantly increases the input overlap, which actually results in the removal of some normals for every character. For example, let's look at Ryu's mediums. Classic Ryu would have Stand and Crouch Medium Punch, Stand and Crouch Medium Kick, and is towards Medium Punch Overhead. Modern Ryu still has the overhead, but hitting Medium while standing results in his Stand Medium Punch, and hitting it while crouching results in his Crouch Medium Kick. There's a bit of a trick to it. Holding auto and hitting medium gives you his crutch medium punch, which allows you to use it in isolation when doing other combos. But his stay medium kick is just gone. It's not like that button is essential to Ryu's game plan, but just about every character in Modern will lose a normal somewhere, usually a poke or something. Now it gets more complicated with special moves. Modern has had normal damage so far, but any special move inputted with the special move button loses 20% of its damage. Interestingly, you can still do special moves with the classic inputs sometimes, and when you do, they still get their full damage. But here's where the command overlap from the simplified control scheme is really hurting you. Let's look at Ryu's Tatsu. Normally, we'd execute it by doing quarter circle back kick, but quarter circle back button for modern Ryu gives him Hashogeki. Thus, the only way we can get Tatsu is by hitting back plus special move. Now this means we always get the scaled version with the reduced damage. But more importantly, we don't actually get to choose which version of Tatsu we get, it's always medium. Now medium is the most useful version generally speaking, but for example, Classic Ryu can use heavy Tatsu in combos for a side swap. And Modern Ryu just doesn't have that option, or at least not without a radically different route. Which version of your special moves you get from the special move button seems to be uniquely programmed for each move by the way. Ryu gets medium donkey kick, medium Tatsu, heavy uppercut, and heavy fireball. It seems like they wanted the most generally useful version of each special. I have the least to say about supers of all the modern changes, even though they're arguably the biggest upgrade over classic controls. You can still input supers with classic inputs, though you have to match the strength of your button with the level of your super. Redoing quarter circles forward light, for example, results in his level 1. While doing it with heavy results in his level 3. If you do the input manually, you get a full damage super, even in combos. However, you can also do supers by inputting heavy and special plus a direction. This allows you to input a super in one frame, albeit with a slight cut in power. I'll talk more about this later. The single most common questions I see in regard to modern are for charge characters. To answer the most important question immediately, charge characters cannot do charge moves unless they have charge. If Guile hits the special move button, he always gets Sonic Blade unless he has back charge or down charge. There is a nice bit of novelty here though. You don't actually break charge to attempt to do a special move. Instead, the game simply resets your charge timer if you actually get the special move. Here's a fairly common scenario. The opponent doesn't attack and cancels to drive rush. During the freeze, they see that you're blocking and so they use their frame advantage and close proximity to go for a throw reset. 
Some of you might not know this, but while you can do any attack out of a Drive Rush, you actually cannot block until the Drive Rush ends. So even if Ryu does nothing and holds down back here, he cannot block this Reversal EX Flash Kick. The EX Flash Kick doesn't just beat the Grab Reset, it actually beats just about anything Ryu can do. Now Ryu does have one option here, and it's the one you'll see the most often. If he attacks Guile with something that's sufficiently fast, it will be a true block string. Guile will never actually get a reversal window, and his EX Flash Kick just won't come out. Instead, he'll block. So let's say Ryu's going to do Drive Rush into Throw Reset, Drive Rush into one Light then Throw, or Drive Rush into two Lights then Throw. Classic Guile cannot attempt to EX Flash Kick all three reset timings, because if he attempts it on the first one, he won't have charge for the next two. But Modern Guile never actually loses charge until the Flash Kick comes out so he can attempt to contest all three possible resets if he wants. So let's talk about the genuine ups and downs for modern controls compared to classic. I think if you're a beginner, there's something very useful about being able to reliably get special move inputs right out the gate. It's really hard to tell a beginner, okay, when the opponent jumps toward you, you have to hit toward, down, down toward, then punch. You'll have a third of a second to do it, and if they do it from too far or too close, you'll miss and get owned for attempting it. Also, if your input is too sloppy, you'll get owned. If your timing on the punch is too early or too late, you might also get owned. The whole situation is just a huge barrier of entry for beginners for being so absurdly easy to do and hard to stop, which is why beginners classically just jump all the time. Modern really solves this. You tell a beginner, throw Hadoukens until you think he's getting impatient, then watch for a jump. If he does it, uppercut him. When the special move is a single button press, it's easier to think of it as an action you can do rather than a sequence you have to do to get the action. Being able to process it faster just takes so many variables out of the situation, and this allows the beginner to reach the metagaming part of a fighting game much more quickly, which in my opinion is the fun part that keeps people coming back for more. Fighting games are fun when you're good at them, so anything that allows people to get a better foot in the door is good. That all being said, even at Diamond or Master level play, people aren't 100% consistent with their anti-airs. In my experience, there's still a distinct difference between playing someone using Classic or Modern at those levels. If I'm playing an opponent using Classic, they'll hit their anti-airs 90% of the time, but some jumps will just slip through where they block or get hit. With Modern, it's more like 99% of your jumps will be stopped. It's not just input reliability that's appealing for strong players, though. One very important distinction for Modern is that their Invincible Uppercut or Super Motions only take a single frame to execute. A really obvious time this is important is when you're burned out in the corner. At any moment, the opponent could decide to Drive Impact you for a Dizzy at a huge combo, and your only defense is often to Super before it hits you. Obviously, if your Super Input is too slow, you get blown up by the Drive Impact. But also, if you're trying to buffer the Super Motion, you're very liable to run into attacks or get hit by walk-in throws. With Modern getting Super out in a single frame, you'll functionally have more time to react to the Drive Impact, and you'll never get hit while buffering Super, since you never need to buffer it. It's also more useful in specific matchups. For example, it's just not viable to do your 6 frame Super input on an incoming Honda Headbutt, Blanca Ball, or something like that. If you're running modern, you can absolutely uppercut or super anything that's reactable, which really hurts the ranges your opponent can use those attacks. Attacks like Marisa's Phalanx or Gladius are just much less functional on opponents with one frame super inputs. For grapplers, having a one frame SPD input is kind of nice because you don't need to spend time turning it. This would be most helpful for walk-in SPD, but sadly you can't choose to do light SPD for the extra range if you do it this way. Special mention for Zangief, where Modern allows him to easily do a standing 720, which is restrictively difficult on Classic. Now those are the biggest advantages of Modern. The weaknesses compared to Classic are much more straightforward. Obviously, some attacks are just off the table, usually a few normals plus some versions of your special moves. Your damage on Modern is simply going to be lower, even if you're not using the shortcuts. Classic Lily, for example, typically does back heavy punch to stay medium kick to special after a drive rush. Modern Lily has no stay medium kick, which is her only cancelable medium normal which would combo here. She's gotta go to light punch instead, which lowers the damage and removes the route to light spire. Classic Ryu has a corner route of back heavy punch to heavy donkey kick followed by a light uppercut. Not only does Modern Ryu not have Heavy Donkey Kick, he doesn't even have back Heavy Punch. 
So this whole route just doesn't even exist. Lily is actually a good example of a character who's quite strong in modern. She has very few attacks, so she loses almost nothing to input overlap. She can do all of her special moves manually, which means she can choose which version she gets, and she doesn't get the cut in power. She has an air invincible DP, which means modern makes her anti airs more reliable, and she can hit incoming Honda headbutts, etc. And her one button SPD is faster to input and more consistent in neutral. The main thing she loses are her overhead and her stand medium kick, which are obviously unfortunate, but not game breaking. Now one thing I will say about Modern is that it's actually not very easy for me to use, despite the fact that I've been playing Street Fighter for two decades now. The way you use the auto button in combos is unlike anything in Classic. For example, if Ryu wants to do the relatively straightforward combo, stand medium punch, crouch medium punch, dungeon hashogeki. I can't be holding auto at the start of the combo, or else I'll get crouch medium punch and lose my ability to confirm. I can't be holding auto at the end, or else I'll get EX Hasrogeki. Since Classic doesn't teach the player to play Modern, I'm feeling pretty confident in saying Modern won't teach the player to play Classic. They're honestly like two different languages. For what it's worth, you can still hit very complex combos in Modern. I would say, technically speaking, these combos are about the same difficulty to do in Classic, just different to do. If you're a new player playing on Modern, you'll still learn all the other things, like how cancels work, how to use your meters, what different characters can do with their special moves, and the other basic parts of learning a fighting game. And you'll learn what attacks you want to use and when, which will make it much easier to learn Classic eventually if you ever want to. But it will be slower than just learning Classic immediately, albeit perhaps much easier on you. Overall, I think Classic is almost always better, since you have full damage on all of your attacks and a few additional options, while the main edges of Modern all focus around one-button inputs, which are only very situationally useful. That being said, you're obviously more versatile if you know how to use both, and the fast inputs are significantly more important for specific matchups where you have something you need to be able to react to quickly, like Marisa or Honda. In this way, I think top level modern is mostly useful as a counterpick. As a closing note, a bunch of my coworkers who don't really play fighting games mentioned to me that they watched EVO 2023, and basically all of them mentioned rooting for the modern player, who was in their words, beating up all the pros. All of them seemed to have the impression that he was a new school player, which I quietly found hysterical since Haitani is one of the five gods. Anyway, thanks for watching, felt good to make a video again.